What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Welcome back. This video is about the M18 Milwaukee Brushless Fuel Angler Pulling Fish Tape. And all the stuff it can do. Like, knock all the shit off the wall. <laughs> so, this is a video that's not about, uh, not a demonstration of it, really. It's not about the specs. If you want to know all the details about it, I'm sure there's a bunch of other videos you could watch, but... This is just my experience with it after using it for a couple weeks, and uh, I feel like, yeah, I feel like I need to do this video. <laughs> so, I have I had my eye on this since they announced it and since they released it, and I never pulled the trigger because it was $500 for the kit with the 240-foot steel fish tape, two of the slim batteries, like this one, the two amp hours, the batteries that are basically, I just call these like basically dead when they're fully charged, but I'm pretty sure they did that. I got a nine amp hour on there right now, but I'm pretty sure they did that because this thing is heavy as shit. Uh, they listed on their website as six pounds, but I'm, I didn't weigh it myself, but I'm pretty sure the six pounds is the body with the motor and without the cartridge or the battery. They have removable cartridges. They have this 240 steel. Then they have like a hundred foot fiberglass, and I think they have a hundred foot steel also. Um, I got the kit that comes with the 240 foot uh, steel one, which is now about a 210 feet because we had an issue. So I was all excited about it, and I didn't ever pull the trigger on it because I just thought it was too too much. I was like, how does this fish tape, where the cartridge of it is worth, I think they, they charge $140 somewhere about there. Don't quote me on that. But they charge about 130, 140 bucks for the cartridge, meaning the rest of the thing is four or three hundred and eighty dollars because it's five hundred bucks for two the two two point amp uh, two point oh amp hour batteries and the the big cartridge. And uh, luckily, I didn't pay for this one. My company bought it. They were going to try them out, and my boss, you know, somehow my office found out that I did the I did this shit on YouTube and. <laughs> Uh, he said, yeah, you're the tool guy, so I'll let you try it out. And plus, I do a lot of uh, underground conduit work. So he gave me this, and I put it right to work, put it right down into this PVC. And uh, the first day of it was okay. It was pretty good, actually. It, uh, it had enough torque to push the tip past little uh, couplings, little things that would normally get hung up on. You'd feel it fight back a little bit, but then it would pop and keep going. And it was, like, easy. You didn't have the fish tape strung out all over the place it went out and then it came back in no problem we were just pulling strings in so i didn't really get to test the pulling power of it but i pulled the thing out and i look at it and i start messing with it and i'm like man this is uh this is kind of soft like this feels much softer than a regular fish tape here is a klein 240 foot and it's hard to convey on video but I don't know. I could probably come up with a scientific test to actually measure the different, uh, you know, malleability of these different fish tapes. But it just instantly, it was very noticeable right away. I was like, this thing is softer than your Gardner Bender or Greenlee or Klein fish tapes. So I was like, okay, maybe there's a design reason for that. Maybe they tested out, you know, a, a full hard fish tape and uh, there was some kind of mechanical issue with it and they had to dial it back. But at the end of the day, a fish tape is the kind of thing that you need to be rough with sometimes. You got to get that thing right on the end of the conduit, spin the whole damn thing around so the, the thing snaps and spins inside the conduit to get over maybe a coupling or, um, you know, get around, you know, finally get around that 90 degree bend in the conduit. But I was like, okay, we'll give it a shot. And I used it on all underground inch and a quarter PVC conduits jumping parking lot lights out. Well, that's my, that was my first mistake. That was what I was working on at the time. My boss gave it to me, so that's what I tried it on. And PVC conduits, no matter how good you know you try to be neat and clean and uh, glue everything really tightly, it's not a waterproof pipe. It's not a plumbing pipe. Water can get in. Also, you're in a dirty environment. There's, even if there's just a little bit of dust in there, you run a fish tape 200 foot through a piece of conduit, it picks up all of the dust from the whole pipe. And or a conduit rather so I pulled it out and it was kind of wet and it was kind of dirty 
So I was like, okay, well, you know, you got to maintain your fish tape. You got to take good care of it. So I tried to wipe it all off and I put it back and it went pretty good the first day. Uh, the next day we were trying to use it to fish wires up through a pole light, a 30 foot long square, like six by six tubing pole light. And I started noticing a noise coming from inside. And the one thing I was concerned about is there's a motor forcing it out and forcing it in. And that completely removes the human feel. Like when you have a regular fish tape and you're pulling it out, things can happen inside of this, this body here where the tape gets twisted or wrapped up on itself. You know, there's certain rules that you got to follow when you're using a regular fish tape, or you're just going to screw up everything inside. Like if you pull it, if you try to grab this and pull it really tight, this cuts down through the middle of the bundle of wire and then it's all tangled up and you have to take the whole fucking thing apart, lay the whole thing out, untangle it, uh, try not to get whacked in the nuts in the process because these things love to find testicles. Like, no matter how hard you try, if uh, you give it the opportunity, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get you. <laughs> so, there's certain like a certain feel to using one of these and this one completely removes that. You can't really feel when it's hung up and or, or really feel what the fish tape is doing. And I think that's a huge disadvantage to using this because uh, at the end of the day, I have not I have not opened this cartridge fully. There's an outer ring here. I did have to take that off because I got a kink. I was uh, pulling the trigger trying to get it to come out and there must have been a bend in it and the fish tape rolled back on itself and got jammed up and then it would just the motor would just torque stall and it wouldn't come out. So I had to take the whole thing apart, which was one, two three uh shit four it was like six or eight little torque screws i had to take apart take the whole thing apart i found the kink i cut it off because uh it's such a it it's softer than a regular fish tape but it is a hardened metal and it work hardens really quickly a couple of bends and it'll snap right off and this was so much of a kink that i was afraid it was just going to snap off inside and it was only like 20 foot sticking out. So I was like, okay, this is now a 210 foot or 230, uh, 20 foot fish tape. No big deal. They do get shorter as they get older. Um, and then it just didn't, it just didn't impress me after that. It made a clicking noise every time I would pull it. And I just started finding flaws in it. And maybe I'm nitpicky and, you know, maybe I'm just uh, adverse to change maybe, but you, uh, using this on underground conduits is a, is a huge no, no, just don't do it. Uh, I had some coworkers use it, and they just uh, they I let them borrow it for indoor uh, two inch EMT conduits, and they they ended up just leaving it completely uncoiled. They had like ten of them to do that were the same length, and they said it was too slow, <laughs> so they left this whole thing just strewn all over the place in the electric room, and then just kept shoving it in by hand. And I'm like, guys, you're kind of missing the point. But they were like, yeah, it's it's kind of slow. Um, I did pull wire with it. I pulled like 80 foot of three number 10s through uh, inch and a quarter PVC from pole light to pole light, and it did pretty good. I was pretty impressed by that. Um, it was none of this. You know, no, the fish tape can kick your ass if you're using it all day, and you unroll the whole thing, and then you roll it back up. Because sometimes leaving it laying out and dragging it through the dirt is not the best option. But I just wanted to make this video to be like, it's not horrible, but I'm not real impressed with it, and I don't understand how this kit costs the same as their full uh, M18 brushless fuel bandsaw, the four and a half inch, the big boy, like the big nice bandsaw. That's also $4.99 for the kit with two batteries, and it, I, I believe that comes with two bigger batteries than this. So I think they have some revisions to make. Um, I would like to see a counter on it. If there's some way, and I know that, like I said, it fish tapes get beat up you 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 you're you know you got to be hard on them sometimes but if they could incorporate a durable little counter it just gave you a ballpark of footage not something to you know order wire by or anything like that but just to give you an idea of maybe how close it was to returning that would be really nice um i think they need to use a harder fish tape maybe there was some design reason uh some designing you know uh problem they had and the solution to it was just going with the softer fish tape i think they should try something harder and figure out how to solve that problem in another way if that was the case but yeah i just kind of want to get it out there i'm an electrician and i had my eyes on this and i was really excited about it and it is kind of a letdown but i was you know kind of i was a little hard on it i don't recommend using it in underground conduits 
but they don't tell you that. They're not going to tell you that if they think that's not ideal. I feel like it was just designed in kind of a sterile, mocked up situation, you know, you know uh, a workshop or something, and it never maybe was prototyped and sent out in the field. I could be wrong. I'm probably wrong. They probably did prototype this, but um, I think it's got promise. It's the first shot. It's the first time anybody ever tried to make an electric fish tape. It's still cool, but um, I have been leaning on my manual one. I, I I see use cases for this, but this is not, and they probably never claimed it, but this is not going to replace a regular fish tape. I'm still going to my regular fish tape most of the time, but this, uh, you know, I guess it has its use cases. I just haven't uh, quite run into it yet. So, you know, it's, uh, it's a good idea, and they got, you know, they got balls for trying it, but it's not quite there. It's not quite there. So I'm not saying don't buy it, but just know it's not going to replace your regular fish tape. It's not the end-all be-all, and it's got flaws, and it's got some uh, it's got some room to grow. I hope they I hope they do have come up with a revision 2 or 3, and they don't just, uh, you know, I don't know what the sales are like on it, but maybe if it didn't sell too well, I hope they don't they just abandon it. But not totally impressed. I don't know. I'd give it like a, a 6.5 out of 10. That's it. So... Yeah, that's the video that inspired me to uh, do a video for the first time in like six months. So <laughs> I put it on Instagram. Check out my Instagram. Uh, if you follow my Instagram, you probably knew this video was coming. But uh, that's it. That's also heavy as shit, too. <laughs> it's not fun. Like some of the... Th one, here we go. It's not over yet, boys. If you got to spin the thing, spinning the fish tape is a thing. This weighs... I don't know exactly what it weighs. They quote it as six pounds on the website, six and a half pounds. It's heavier than that. Um, it's it's very unwieldy, and uh, like I said, I go to my regular fish tape most of the time. That's it. Um, check out my Instagram. Check out me. Check it out. Uh, come visit me on Twitch. I don't do too much tool stuff there, but I'm playing video games all the time, and half of the time it ends up going to tool discussions, and I go on Google, and we're all looking up tools bullshit about tools it's fun i have a good time over there but uh yeah mike's uh tool shed at twitch.tv so thanks for watching